What happens when we die? Oh, um, well... <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I think. I'm, I'm not... I mean, I can't say this is the definitive answer, of course. It's just what I think. I think when we die, we, we continue to be able to dream, but we lose the ability to wake up. So, um, I, you see, when we're dreaming... Every one of us, every night in our dreams, we, most, most of us forget our dreams, but we, most of us dream four or five times a night. And some people remember their dreams better than others. But in our dreams, we have another body, a dream body. Um, when I'm dreaming, I'm walking around, I'm talking to people. My physical body is laying asleep in bed. But my, um, in my dream, I can move around and I can even fly sometimes. So... In the, in the dream, what happens depends on my fears, my experience, my memories, etc. I think when we die, we're in a kind of dream st state, at least some of the time. And um, the kind of dreams we have, the kind of dream state we're in, depends on the kind of person we are, our memories, our hopes, and our experience. Now, what gave me a clue as to how it might go on from just being in a kind of dream is um, once when I was in a dream, I was in a dangerous situation, I found myself praying. Well, I pray every day as part of my normal practice. Um, but when I found I could pray in a dream, then I realized that if there's an opening to the spirit, there can be an opening from the dream as well as from the waking state. Um, and you see, I think that when you look at near-death experiences, or there's, most people have had about them, and some people in this room have had them, I'm sure. Um, typically, when people have a near-death experience, they find themselves floating out of their body, looking at it from above, then going through a kind of tunnel into the light and feeling a realm of great love and so on. And then, of course, they come back because it's a near-death experience, not a death experience. Um, well, um, and these happen in different cultures. They, they, they happen differently in different cultures. In, 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 in the West, they usually f take that form. In India, um, they take a slightly different form. They, 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 Hindus often have near-death experiences where they, they float out of their body, they go through a tunnel, uh, but it ends them up, ends, uh, they end up in a kind of large office-like space with an uh, old man with a white beard sitting behind a desk. It's, Yama, the Lord of Death. And Yama says to his assistants, you know, he says, what's your name? So they say their name. Then assistants get out ledgers and they look it up. And he looks through these ledgers. And then he says, um, so are you uh, Vinod Prakash, Vinod K. Prakash? And he says, no, I'm Vinod L. Prakash. And, he say, and then he says to the assistants, you've got the wrong man, take him back. It's a ghastly bureaucratic blunder. And... Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, um, anyway, the, um, so it takes on different forms. And I think it, it may well be that suicide bombers who hope they'll go to an oasis filled with almond-eyed dancing girls will serve them dates and so on. Maybe that's exactly what happens to them. And maybe atheists who think it all goes blank f will find it all goes blank. Um, so this view, the dream theory, you see, fits the facts as far as I can see. And it means that it's completely everyone gets what they believe in and expect and um you see the traditional is closest to the traditional catholic doctrine of purgatory where you go into an intermediate realm after death and or a bardo the tibetans would call it um and then you can go on beyond that into a realm of more absorption into the bliss of god but you can't go straight there most of us aren't would would be sort of dazzled by the light if we went straight there uh, so there's a period of preparation or, or um, first. Anyway, that's my own view for what it's worth. <laughs>